world, spiraling into darkness and chaos. Only a handful dare to stand up and push back against the insanity that is quickly shadowing and extinguishing what's left of light and truth. In this No Holds Barred podcast, with truth directly from the word, Michael is one such voice, punching through this darkness to dispel the deception and lies being pushed on this planet from all sides. Buckle up, place your trays in the upright position, enjoy the ride. Bullet Points Tonight's special broadcast is a melding of Bullet Points 10, Point Blank Range, and Bullet Points 11, Double Tap, talking about the first and last Trump of God and the events surrounding these Trumps. For full context, I would request that you go back and start with BP1 and listen all the way through after you've listened to this one because you're probably going to have a lot of questions and maybe even put up some rebuttals to things I say in this podcast. But hey, that's what we're here for. Where are we heading? Everybody hollers about the last Trump. You know, the one where the dead in Christ rise first and then those alive and remaining are caught up. Well, what about the first Trump? We've clearly established the resurrection of the dead in Christ and the catching up of those that are alive and remaining takes place at the last trump, at the time of Jesus' second coming to this earth after the seals, trumpets, and vials are completed. Our reference texts are 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 52. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. And... 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Did anyone hear anything about a seventh angel with the seventh trumpet in either of these sets of verses? I didn't. And I know you, the listener, didn't hear it either. But there's a teaching out there that they contend tooth and nail in that the seventh trumpet of the seven angels is one and the same as that last trump of 1 Corinthians 15.52 and 1 Thessalonians 4.16. And with what's already been laid out as far as the timeline and when the resurrection slash catching up occurs, we've already blasted this seventh trumpet theology into oblivion as well. But we'll cite it in and put a kill shot to it once and for all, and learn some things along the way, I'm sure. What about that first trump? What happens there? Have you ever pondered why your pastor has never mentioned the first trump? Not to be confused with the seven trumpets of the angels which are for judgment now. Keep this in mind. 
Let me fire a shot from the hip into this one. If the last trump is blown prior to Daniel's 70th week even beginning, then when does the first trump get blown? What's that tied to in scripture? That's a good question to put to him, don't you think? A good starting point for us here tonight might be extracted from Isaiah 26, and we've been covering it. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord, as in Jehovah, the Father, cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Now, if the last trump is tied directly to resurrecting the dead in Christ and the catching up of those alive and remaining at the time of Revelation 19 unfolding, as I've contended, can we look into that possibly the first trump, as in trump of God, mind you, has something to do with these same groups, but at a different time? Where would one need to be to be protected as God himself shows up to punish the inhabitants of the earth and we not be included in his indignation that we might still be alive and remaining when Jesus returns some 1260 days plus later. We've covered it thoroughly in the past six podcasts, hammered it home, actually, in the last two casts, for sure. Matthew twenty four thirty one is telling us of an entirely different event than what most say is, that word again, you know the one, that something entirely different is going on here that no one seems to want to even bring to the table as a possibility. And it seems, for some reason, they just flat out want to reject it. Or on an even worse note, they just simply can't see it. Verse 31, And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. I'm contending this verse to be describing the sending forth of the reapers, the harvesters, the angels, by the blowing of the first trump blown by God, or at the very least, for him, by an order to an angel to do so, to signal for something very critical to begin to take place which is never mentioned in any biblical discussions or teachings concerning events of prophecy throughout the word that I've come across. And there's a reason for it. It's called dispensationalism, which falls right smack dab into replacement theology in one form or another over and over again. We'll get to it just what this dispensationalism is and causes. First shot in this volley. Here's a verse that tells us about God himself blowing a trumpet. Zechariah 9 and 14. And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning, and the Lord God shall blow the trumpet and shall go with the whirlwinds of the south. Now to take this a step further, if you don't know about the first trump, you don't know where you're going or even how you're going to get there. Jeremiah 51, 27. Set ye up a standard in the land, blow the trumpet among the nations, prepare the nations against her, Call together against her the kingdoms of Ararat, Mini, and Ashkenaz. Appoint a captain against her. Cause the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars. 
quick shot. Those caterpillars right there, eh, you might want to dig a little deeper into the Hebrew on that one. Ezekiel 33, 3 through 6. If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. I bet these verses could lead us right to for wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Joel 2.1 Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. And I just want to pull over real quick right here and get you to think if you're in that pre-scenario about reading from 1 Thessalonians 4 and hopping on over into chapter 5 and taking a look at it about the day of the Lord. Joel 2.15, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. If you want to talk about the last trump, you better know about the first trump. There's only two. These two sets of verses I'm about to read are the last. No one disputes that. We've heard them before from 1 Corinthians 15. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written Death is swallowed up in victory. And 1 Thessalonians 4, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And a quick bullet point right here. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. I guess most of the prebies are under the assumption that we're being brought with him from heaven. No, we're going to be brought with him from the clouds in our own atmosphere into the kingdom, period. Part of our blessed hope, for sure. Why can't the pre see and understand that these verses are in parallel to Revelation 19 at his coming? Well, that's why we're here. Let's load another clip. In our moving to understand what the first trump is all about, I suggest we buckle up for this next section. The seventh trumpeters, as we're going to call them here. Did you think I forgot about you? The seventh trumpeters are one of the theological groups that slide 
all of the times given us in Scripture into the last half of Daniel's 70th week. And by default, the trumpets slide with it in their interpretation. We're going to put the kill shots to that real quick like. Actually, we already have in the past six podcasts, but let's dial in our target just a little clearer. I lightly touched on the fact that the trumpets cannot occur in the final 1260 days of the seven-year tribulation in one of the last couple of casts. And I'm going to say right now, in either the next podcast or the one after, we're going to nail that down, that none of the trumpets can be occurring in the final 1260 days. So, I'll get to it. Why? Because the beast, the little G-God of the false prophet, has to be loosed from the bottomless pit prior to the final 1260 days even beginning, for starters. And I pray we remember there are two in this equation, as I've said on more than one occasion. Poet and didn't know it. Now, right here is where the times really need to be dialed in in our understanding. And I can't stress this enough, as this is where this crew of our brothers and sisters, the seventh trumpeters, go off target in throwing the 1290 days, the 1335th day, the 1260 days with the 30 day difference and the 45 all into the last half. I warned against this in the first podcast, and we've covered these times in depth in quite a few different casts so far. We should be clear already that the seventh trumpeters ain't hitting the bullseye whatsoever. And if not, let's do so now. 1290 days to the abomination of desolation. 45 days of hell on earth and the 1335th day we're told that those who make it to that day are blessed are they taken to that place of protection wheat from tares where she'll be protected for the final 1260 days or is she you know That word I told you we ain't mentioning no more. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, those 45 days, can you answer it for me? That's right. The sixth seal is cracked and it's game on. A great earthquake sets this world reeling to and fro like a drunkard. She split through on one side. The mountains and islands are moved from their places. The sun goes black. The moon turns as red as blood. And what? The stars fall. By default, the war in heaven of Revelation 12 is completed when they achieve ground zero, trapped here, with us in the flesh, caught in a snare, as per Isaiah 24, and a hundred other verses. I said in one of the past podcasts, time for God doesn't stop as we're reading through the chapters of Revelation. Remember the projector analogy? While you're reading chapter 7, guess what's still happening? The seventh seal gets cracked. The timeline continues while we read the parenthetical chapters that are overlaid on the seals, trumpets, and vials. Now, this is going to get deep. We might have to put on a crash helmet for what's coming along with those seat belts we're strapped in with at this point. Before we move forward, let me slide back into that dusty Old Testament you don't hear much out of sitting in the pews the thing that hath been it is that which shall be and that which is done is that which shall be done and there is no new thing under the sun ecclesiastes 1 9 remember this and be assured recall it to mind you transgressors 
Remember the former things long past, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is no one like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things which have not been done saying my purpose will be established and I will accomplish all my good pleasure. Isaiah 46, making clear what God is telling us here. God loves to repeat himself. He told us what's coming We back there in the Old Testament. Why'd I bring this in right here? Because you're not going to believe my next statement right off the top of the bat. You ready? Satan and his entourage. As the war in heaven is won by Michael and those angels loyal to the crown, they achieve ground zero on the very day that the beast ascends out of the bottomless pit. Yep, you heard it right. The tail end of what is caused by the opening of the sixth seal, the stars falling, we've heard it no less than a hundred times in the past six podcasts. It culminates in the fifth trumpet being blown and the bottomless pit being opened all within the same 24 hour window. The stars hit the ground when the pit is opened up. Can we prove it? (laughs) You better believe it. I did read for you. Remember the former things long past. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is no one like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things which have not been done, saying my purpose will be established and I will accomplish all my good pleasure. Isaiah 46, once again, if you don't lock this in and keep it loaded in the chamber at all times, the timeline and all the events corresponding on it can be wrapped around your head and spun right off. But in this series of podcasts, I'm laying down points that we can lock and load and know what is to come. Ready for the shot? You're remembering that God told us the end from the beginning? You got to believe this one simple verse first. From Genesis 7, it came about after the seven days that the water of the flood came upon the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on the same day, all the fountains of the great deep burst open and the floodgates of the sky were opened. The rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. Traversing down to verse 24, the water prevailed upon the earth 150 days. I got some splaining to do, don't I? Let's hear those verses one more time. Listen closely now. It came about after the seven days that the water of the flood came upon the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on the same day, all the fountains of the great deep burst open, And the floodgates of the sky were opened, and the rain fell upon the earth for forty days and forty nights. So I guess now, you're thinking I'm off my rocker, right? You're thinking, what for the love of all that is holy does Genesis 7 and the rains coming down and the fountains of the deep bursting forth and the 150 days have anything to do with Satan being cast down and the beast ascending out of the bottomless pit, right? Remember in one of the past podcasts, I mentioned picturing Satan and the stars falling like the 
rains coming down in the days of Noah. And that when something bursts forth this time around the ride, picture it like the fountains of the deep bursting forth. Well, here we are. And if, once again, you believe God's word, that he will show us the end from the beginning, he scoped from way back then the timing of the stars achieving ground zero on the exact same day that the fifth trumpet would be blown and the bottomless pit would be unlocked and the beast would be unleashed. As it was in the days of Noah, Jesus said, would it be when he returns? Well, we've got to get there somehow, right? In order for it to be like the days of Noah before Jesus' second coming arrives, we've got to go backwards. In reading Revelation, if you can't hear the transgression of Genesis 6 and backwards with the angels and then read on to hear about the flood and two witnesses... There's your Moses and Aaron, the exodus on wings of eagles, the tabernacle protected in the wilderness. The exodus angel even shows up with a little book in his hand. And I wonder, might that little book be filled with an oath sworn to God by the people? Hmm. We hear of the Ark of the Covenant in the mix. Korah's rebellion's in there even if you've got eyes to see and ears to hear. Kind of sounds to me like we're going back. Back to the days of Noah. Even unto the garden when God walked with man. So if we want to understand the first trump, where would we go? The trumps were introduced way back there in that dusty Old Testament once again. Exodus 19. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim, and were come to the desert of Sinai, and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how... I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation." These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord hath spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. Seems they kind of swore an oath unto God here, did they not? A little book in an angel's right hand, having recorded all they said, maybe? And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee for ever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people, and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes, and be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. 
And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall surely be put to death. There shall not an hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live when the trumpet soundeth long. They shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the nether part of the camp. Hmm. Did the camp just move out to a place where God would be? Did we hear a voice of a trumpet that caused them to move? And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in a fire and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. (laughs) In just five short verses, I heard a trump of God and where when it's first heard, the camp moves. And then we read when we hear it again and what? God comes down. There's something to all this, I'd say. (laughs) We're not done with all this yet. More to come. With that said, let's load a clip into this thing and tear that target slam off the wall. The first trump. The one the four-wall church, nor any of the so-called scholars who hold to a pre-escape plan of any sort in their discussions ever seem to mention, which of course is a major part of the reason for their errors, And for the life of me, it still blows me away that that one group of the pre's, that they grab that last trump, slide it up to before Daniel's 70th week even begins, and turn it into pink-winged unicorns with little pixie fairies handing out Twizzlers and cotton candy galore, berating everyone who try and tell them the truth of how they ride off into the sunset and cross the rainbow into Never Never Land for seven years to frolic with our Lord before the decree is even given by the Father to go and fetch his wife, as we've covered in every facet, occurs at the very end of this whole shebang right there in Revelation 19. Right here, right now, we should be able to end this entire series if Christians would but believe the word that the resurrection, catching up of those still alive and remaining, happens right there, as I just said, in Revelation 19, at his, as we've covered, parousia. And from there, of course, we can't fail to mention all the rest of the theologies run amok with sliding the same event up and down, forward and backward on the timeline, this way and that, as they try and prove their erroneous theologies are what is to come. And to that, I say, hashtag 
time to get a clue. On point. As we were closing in last week's podcast, we were nailing the target in placing the fall of the stars, the angels, as the war in heaven comes to its end just a short time after the celestial events of the sixth seal being cracked as occurring in conjunction with the ascension of the beast out of the bottomless pit at the fifth trumpet. That right there blows the seventh trumpeter's theology right out of the water. How many times have I said that already? How? Because it's at the fifth trumpet that the beast, as I've said more than once in this series, is unleashed. This puts the trumpets as occurring way sooner than the seventh trumpeters have their timelines configured. And it makes no sense for the fifth trumpet to be before the final 1260 days begins. And then some 1260 days later, we get the sixth and seventh trumpets. Looking into the different timelines, you'd see what I'm talking about. Citing it in, the pit is locked until the fifth trumpet. He The beast doesn't get out at any time other than when we read of the bottomless pit's opening in Revelation chapter 9, where he then is set up as a little G-God by the man of sin, who will be his false prophet for the final 1260 days, three and a half years of 360 days day years, 42 months, a time, times, and a half a time. Check this. I was flat out told I was insane in a Facebook group discussion to connect Revelation 9 in the opening of the bottomless pit to the beast ascending out of it because it doesn't specifically mention that he rises at that point and isn't detailed until Revelation 17. I was told by the self-same sister that that's when he comes up. Revelation 17. Yeah, shaking my head again. Let's hear the opening of the abyss real quick. Revelation 9, 1 and 2. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. You catch that? To him, this star, to him, it says, will be given the key, and then everything bursts forth from out of the deep. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. This locks in where we left off in the last cast, does it not? The sixth seal is the event horizon where the earth is rocked from its foundations, moved from her place, kicked back to the days of Noah in our orbital placement, as well as our degree of rotation from 23.4 degree axial tilt back up to a zero degree rotation. Also, our time of spin, the days get shorter. The years by default do the exact same. And just shortly after this seal is cracked, as the war in heaven is coming to its completion, where Satan and his entourage are kicked out of heaven and cast unto the earth, Jesus Erkome, as we've covered, his being revealed takes place. And the elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other, will be gathered together by the good guys and taken to their place that has been prepared, not raptured, relocated, gathered together where? 
to a place prepared in the wilderness, not heaven, into the barn as Jesus spoke in the parables. Wheat from tares, five wise from five foolish. Do you think that place Jesus said he was going to go and prepare for you, that mansion with many rooms, he's going to call it a barn? This is a totally different event being spoken of that has been, as I've said before, hijacked into the rapture. Now, before we pick back up and locking in that the trumpets are blowing while the effects of the sixth seal are still causing this planet to reel to and fro like a drunkard, let's uh, hear a little bit about God's promises to gather together the woman he divorced and dispersed among the nations. Jeremiah 29 and 14. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Ezekiel 20 and verse 34. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. Ezekiel thirty six twenty four. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Zephaniah 3.20 At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth when I turn back back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. Matthew 3.12, whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Matthew 13, 20, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Matthew 24, 31, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Matthew 13, 27, and then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. John eleven fifty two and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Ephesians one ten that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. And a hundred more that all refer to the exact same event. The event of the gathering together via the angels, the reapers, as recorded in Revelation, goes a bit like this if it hasn't clicked just yet. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half a time from the face of the serpent. Revelation 12 and 14. Now herein lies the problem with the prebies in whichever camp they reside, pre-trib, pre-wrath, mid-trib, and they're trying desperately 
to have themselves evacuated from this planet and into the throne room. They've thrown off all God has said in his promises that he would gather her, the wife he divorced, which is Israel, as in the ten tribes that are still scattered around the globe, just as he said over and over and over in the word that they would be. They throw that word church into the mix and separate themselves from her, even going to the point that they, these from today's church, will be gathered before her. Yeah, I'm shaking my head again right now. Israel, the geographic nation of, well, all 10 tribes ain't there right now. That's the problem. The church believes that Israel is complete and take promises and events from prophecy and apply this one to that and that one to this and make nothing but chaos out of all the word is telling us. 1948 didn't complete Israel's regathering into the land. That is a very inaccurate assumption that they, whoever they are, would like for us to believe. But that's not what God has said. Some of the verses I read a minute ago are to Judah, reading the chapters from where those verses were exerted might help you out. Judah, the tribe of the southern kingdom in the two house reality of what took place in centuries past judah of the two houses having never been divorced was brought back into the land from captivity in babylon israel however the divorced wife the northern kingdom which consisted of 10 tribes well she she ain't come home yet and I'm going to say this, if you don't understand what I'm pointing to here, you pretty much don't know or truly understand what the gospel, the good news truly is. Jesus did say in Matthew 15, he only came but for the lost sheep of Israel. Those 10 tribes carried off into Assyria and assimilated into the nations of the four corners of the earth. Isaiah chapter 11. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked." And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf, and the young lion, and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the 
Gentiles seek and his rest shall be glorious and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west, They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, and with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river, and shall smite it in the seven streams, and make men go over dry shod. And there shall be an highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Perhaps a very in-depth podcast on just who is who in all of this is needed to hit the bullseye. But we got to get some bullet points fired downrange first. Certainly by now, if you've followed me in these podcasts, you've realized the goal in me doing them is to undo false teachings of any... Uh, here we go again, of any rapture as occurring at any point prior to Jesus' second coming, his parousia that we've covered, as is chronicled in Revelation 19, where it is then and only then that the resurrection of the dead in Christ and the catching up of those still alive and remaining will occur. And ultimately, to set points from scripture that prove all we're looking into to be the truth of all that is to come. Picking up where we left off, Exodus 19, in the third month when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Raphadim, and were come to the desert of Sinai, and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I Bear you on eagle's wings and brought you unto myself. Sighting down on that right there, as God has told us, that which has been is that which shall be. Your radar ought to be on full alert mode after hearing me read verse 4 right there. Bear you on eagle's wings just like we're going to see again as per Revelation 12 and 14. Here, let's hear it. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half a time from the face of the serpent. Those Two wings of a great eagle? Well, they ain't American C-130s carrying her off to a base and landing on some airstrip somewhere out in the wilderness of Saudi Arabia. Those wings in Revelation 12, 14 are a symbolic representation shown to John in the vision of exactly what Jesus said they are. Angels. 
Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And we talked about that word world, age. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Backing up for just a second, verse 41 there. Gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, but the wheat is gathered into the barn, the wilderness, place prepared, and they stay. But the truth hijacked that, It's said that they're raptured. Well, if you're raptured, you just went somewhere where verse 41 is saying the kingdom's here and things are taken out that offend and the kingdom's here. I mean, I hope you're getting what I'm trying to say there. Anyway, picking back up in verse 43, then shall the righteous shine forth. Oh, the righteous are here. I was just saying that. As the sun in the kingdom of their father Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Wow. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which, when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the age, I mean world, the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast the wicked them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth, Matthew 13, which lines right up with Matthew 24. We've covered this one how many times now? Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming Urkome, in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. That great sound of a trumpet there in verse 31, we were all over it. And as we're looking into it tonight, is the first trump of God that no one wants to talk about. But instead, at least in the pre-wrath camp, they want to hijack the truth into a rapture. Once again, this is not the resurrection catching up being spoken of here that we're going through. It's the gathering together into the wilderness, a relocation, not an evacuation. Need one more from Matthew 25. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him, which hath 10 talents. 
For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, just who do we think Jesus is inferring here will be taking from him that hath not and then ends up casting this unprofitable servant into outer darkness? Who do we think this is? Revelation 14 and 14 through 20. We've covered it. Tells you all about it. Does this now make you wonder exactly what outer darkness is and what's in that darkness, where it's at, how long it lasts. That dusty Old Testament tells you about it. A little story about a place called Goshen where God always left the light on for them. If you ain't where the light's on, guess where you're at. Let's get back on those trumps of God and the moving of the camp. Back to Exodus 19, into the wilderness we go. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Your pastor ever told you you were going to be kings and priests before the Lord? Who's being spoken to here? Here, let me read that verse again in case you missed it. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of israel continuing and moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all the words which the lord commanded him and all the people answered together and said all that the lord hath spoken we will do And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes. And be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves that ye go not up unto the mount or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall be surely put to death. There shall not an hand touch it but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled and Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God and they stood at the nether part of the mount. The camp just moved out to a place where God is that he prepared when they heard a voice of a trumpet. Did they not? This voice of a trumpet caused them to what? 
move, relocate. These verses we just heard create a shadow of the first trump of God. The one I've said seems to be left out of end times teachings. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace and the whole mount quaked greatly ringing like an Ercome event as per Matthew 24.30 sounds like to me. Now listen for the parousia. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake and God answered him by a voice. The Lord came down down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount and Moses went up. Wow, now that sounds like a last trump of God and a resurrection slash catching up of those still alive and remaining to me. A perfect shadow and silhouette of the entire process of what is to come and everything we've been looking into in these podcasts. If you've just come across this podcast in this episode, it'd probably be a bit rough to make heads or tails of what I'm pointing at without having first heard the rest of the casts first, at least the last one. And if so, I would ask of you, please go back and start at the beginning of these casts for a complete context. Back to the days of Noah. Tying up all we've covered here. Once the sixth seal is cracked and the earth's thrown into a tailspin, we're reading through chapter 7, all about the 144,000 being sealed and the great multitude, which we've lightly covered just who the great multitude is. And I've hinted at who the 144,000 are, but we've yet to cover them in depth. Anyways, while we're reading about them, the seventh seal has been cracked, the seven angels have been given their trumpets, and the first four trumpets of the angels have started to blow up to that fifth trumpet that unleashes the beast whom the whole world is going to pay homage to by the way via the direction of the false prophet and let's not forget satan and his crew in that same 24-hour window achieve ground zero with us right here on earth in the flesh. So when we read in Matthew 24 verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Catch this. We were just told in verse 29 of the time span from the sixth seal through the seventh seal and right through to the blowing of the fifth trumpet, all in one verse. So we should, by the time we get to Revelation, remember all about the angels and their punishment that's coming via Isaiah 24 and a hundred other verses we've covered in all these casts. I suggest going back for some real in-depth info on the punishment of the angels, the stars, the host. Bullet point here. When Michael and the good guys are done kicking the teeth in of Satan and the bad boys, the good guys, they'll be along to pick you up as per Matthew 24, 31. Don't worry. Let's pull our proof text from the last podcast in here for a uh, double tap. Genesis 7 and verse 10. It came about after the seven days that the water of the flood came upon the earth. 
in the 600th year of Noah's life in the second month on the 17th day of the month on the same day all the fountains of the great deep burst open and the floodgates of the sky were open the rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights let's line up the crosshairs and fire the shot let me paraphrase here genesis 7 and 10 on the same day the fifth trumpet is blown in the fountains of the great deep burst open the beast shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and in this same 24 hour window the stars satan and his cohorts will hit the ground as the floodgates of the sky are opened just as the rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights <laughs> now that's one crazy paraphrase there is it not I did ask in the last podcast if you thought I was off my rocker connecting these dots. Well, let's find out. Remember, I just said a few minutes ago, back to the days of Noah. And traversing down to verse 24 of Genesis 7, the water prevailed upon the earth 150 days. 150 days from chapter 7 and verse 11 listen now in the 600th year of noah's life in the second month on the 17th day of the month on the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened in chapter 8 and verse 4 and the ark rested in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. From the second month and 17th day to the seventh month and 17th day, well, that's five months. Now, where have we heard that before? As we're right now sighting in the fifth trumpet, and the beast being unleashed is your prophecy acclimatization light going off in your mind yet it should be and the fifth angel sounded and i saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit and he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth nor any green thing neither any tree but only those men which have not the seal of god in their foreheads and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. The waters prevailing this time around the ride well they got a bit of sting to them i'd say the end from the beginning five thirty day as it was before the flood thirty day months 150 days five months where the waters were upon the earth and for five months, the locusts will be too. Another perfect shadow and silhouette. And I wonder just who that star that fell and was given the key to unlock the abyss. I wonder who that is. Many have speculated. And certainly it could be Hasetan himself. Scripture never says just who this star 
angel is one way or the other that we ought to consider maybe just maybe that prince that resides over the region of Assyria we covered perhaps it's him following the orders of the man who stripped this member of the host of the stars of his place in the Tamid at that altar that resides before the throne of Almighty God. Just a thought. If you're truly following along and paying attention in these casts we're doing, you should be hearing that everything written that is to come in the book of Revelation has happened before and is in the Old Testament. The first five books of the Word and the prophets, psalms, it's all in there. That which has been is that which shall be. Nothing new under the sun. The end written from the beginning. Once you start to get this, the word comes alive off the pages. Now backing up in rapid fire succession, the first four of the trumpets are sounded. Remember now, these are not to be confused with the first trump of God with the moving of the camp we covered a few minutes back. And also these events are like the lighted projector analogy we covered from chapter 6 of Revelation into these verses which have chapter 7 laid over it in explanation of the sealing of the 144,000 and the vision of the partial completion of the martyred from the fifth seal as depicted in the great multitudes seen before the throne. Once again, I've said this more than once, God's time doesn't stop from chapter 6 into chapter 8 for chapter 7 to be read first. Revelation 8, And when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. The seventh seal is the issuing of these seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Did you hear that? Let me read it again. And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Remember tonight in our reading in Exodus 19? Listen. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunderings and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled and mount sinai was altogether on a smoke because the lord descended upon it in fire and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace and the whole mount quaked greatly Somebody ought to be getting up out of their chair right about now with a shout, huh? And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth and the third part of the trees was burnt up and all green grass was burnt up. That verse right there is loaded. We'll get to it in another cast. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, 
and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. The days and nights just got shorter by how much? One third. Slice it and dice it. 16 hour days from that point on no longer 24 hours in a day and finishing that round with verse 13 and i beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice woe 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 to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound the three woes the first woe the beast is unleashed out of the bottomless pit as another angel star that has fallen is given the key right on time and right on target to get ready for the final 1260 days we previously covered in one of the podcasts the times given us in the word that tell us as matter of fact that he the beast as per revelation 13 gets a full 42 months which equates in days of noah time to 30 day months 1260 days a time times and a half time or three and a half Noah years one woe is past and behold there come two woes more hereafter and the sixth angel sounded and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet loose the four angels which are bound in the great river euphrates and the four angels were loosed which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men that's two woes and we're out of time Next time, buckle up, because this is where it goes off the hook. Blessings to you and yours, in Jesus' name. See you soon. Bullet Points.